Hello everyone, Brandy Bongos here, and this is the first video in a series describing story arcs in the classic series of Doctor Who. This is designed for viewers new to the classic run of Doctor Who, and there are a lot of you out there. I've been seeing you on Twitter and Facebook groups, with BritBox having launched in many other countries, and a whole wealth of classic Doctor Who now available for you at home. If you're enjoying this video, please give me a like, give me a subscribe. There are going to be at least four videos in this series, and today we are covering five classic series story arcs. Now, how are you going to get to watch these? Firstly, easy way, get BritBox if you can. Another way is to buy the DVDs. All of the classic series is available on DVD. For some of these stories, possibly not today, but other missing ones, you may need the soundtrack recordings, which are available on CD and also as digital download. Anyway, let's get into it with our first story arc for this video. So, at the beginning of this series, we are appropriately starting with the beginning. Now, most story arcs in the classic series aren't as designed as they are in the new series. The production team didn't usually go in for, oh, we're going to make this a season-long story arc. That did happen occasionally. But something that a lot of fans see as an arc are the first 13 episodes of Doctor Who, comprising three stories, An Unearthly Child, The Daleks, and The Edge of Destruction. The story arc here concerns the four leads. The Doctor, his granddaughter Susan, and their unwilling passengers Ian and Barbara, and the time they spend getting to know each other across these three stories. Now, this could be quite surprising for those of you only used to the new series, because early on the Doctor is not a very pleasant character. He is a lot more pragmatic in his approach, and there are even times in these first three stories where he advocates the use of violence, he drugs Ian and Barbara because they keep asking too many awkward questions. He's not a pleasant person to be around, but these first three stories are crucial in beginning to soften that character and making him realise that he can depend on other people and other people can depend on him as well. This is also the beginning of the series, so if you're planning a rewatch right from the start, you'd have to start here anyway. I don't necessarily recommend watching right from the start, I recommend dipping in and out of different eras, which hopefully this series of videos will help you do. But the beginning is still a very good place to start. Jumping forward about 10 years, we get the story arc, The Fall and Redemption of Mike Yates. Now, Mike Yates is a unit soldier. He is the second in command to the Brigadier. The Brigadier, for you new series fans, is Kate Stewart's dad. And we also see him in the Sarah Jane adventures if you've only seen 21st Century Doctor Who. However, as I say, Mike Yates is his 2IC. And over the course of these three stories, not to spoil too much for you, but Mike goes through a bit of a personal crisis and does the unthinkable, but does get some measure of redemption at the end. Now, The Green Death, Invasion of the Dinosaurs, and Planet of the Spiders are all six-part stories, and they all might be a little bit slower than what you are used to at home. But they also feature... Sarah Jane Smith in the latter two stories, and Joe Grant in the first story. The story arc for Mike Yates is quite atypical of Doctor Who at the time, and this team of regulars, the unit team and the Doctor in the Shape of John Pertwee, had been working together for about four years when this plot gets kicked into motion. And I find it quite heartwarming, and it has quite a nice, if abrupt, ending. But the story of Mike Yates would continue in the Nest Cottage audio tales many years later with Tom Baker as the Doctor. You don't necessarily need to go find those, but they are quite fun, especially if you have an Audible membership, you can get those on there. But for now, start with The Fall and Redemption of Mike Yates. The third story arc I want to talk about today is The Return of the Master. 
The Master had been mostly absent from the show since the death of the original actor Roger Delgado in 1973, with just one appearance in 1976 in The Deadly Assassin. You can add this story to that arc if you like, but you don't really have to. Everything you need is in the Return of the Master arc, and that comprises the Keeper of Traken, Legopolis, and Castravalva. This is a 12-part arc which sees the arrival of companions, the departure of a doctor, and of course a brand new master in the form of Anthony Ainley. Now, a lot of people don't rate him as highly as some of the other masters, but this early on in his tenure, he brings a very quiet menace to the role, but also a bit of a rage when it calls for it as well. I would highly recommend this arc, especially if you're into electronic music, which 80s Who is really big on, and there are three cracking soundtracks in this story. Check out this. Now, <laughs> that is actually atypical of the music in this, but there is some absolutely wonderful scores here. Okay, check out this instead. Yeah. Keeper of Traken, Logopolis, Castrovalva. Go check them out now, The Return of the Master. The fourth story arc for today, it's not really explicitly an arc, and at least one of these stories is going to turn up in a later video as well. This was an attempt by producer John Nathan Turner to shake things up in the TARDIS because all three of the regulars were leaving. The Fifth Doctor, Peter Davison, Tegan and Turlow were all being written out of the show. And so he decided to stagger the departures and also the arrivals of the new Doctor and new companion Perry. So this arc starts with Resurrection of the Daleks. It's a cracking Dalek action story, and really it's them at, I think, possibly their most violently deadly in the classic series. Moving on from there, we have Planet of Fire, which is a beautiful story about the power of faith and religion, but also the way that can be corrupted. And it introduces a new companion, Perry, in this story. It also has classic British actors such as Barbara Shelley and Peter Wingard in the guest roles. It's sort of a very quiet story in between two very action-packed ones, because straight away we move into the Caves of Androzani. Now, this is held up by many people as one of the best Doctor Who stories ever made. I think it's great drama. I think it's a very challenging Doctor Who because it has a very bleak tone. So your mileage may vary on this one. If you want to extend this story arc, you can continue with the first story of the Sixth Doctor's era, The Twin Dilemma. No disrespect to old Sixie here, but just realise that it's a very different story and level of quality to the Caves of Androzani, and you might just make it through. But at the very least, the last three Fifth Doctor stories form what I call an all-change arc, because everyone changes over in this, and there is a real feeling of sweeping the decks and just renewal throughout all of this. And then you get the Twin Dilemma. Finally, and I'm stretching the definition of the word arc a little bit here, but the Barusa arc. Barusa is a character introduced in The Deadly Assassin, and he is an old tutor and mentor of the Doctors. In this story, he is very haughty, very arrogant, but also has a very dry wit and assists the Doctor in thwarting a plan by the Master. Barusa would next appear, played by a totally new actor, in a story called The Invasion of Time. This is also set on Gallifrey. It concerns an invasion of Gallifrey. I'm not going to say who's invading in order to preserve some suspense for you. This Barusa is a little less haughty, but he is no less diminished with his dry wit, if you see what I mean. And I really like the performance of the actor here. It may not be the best story, however. <laughs> Continuing that trend, we have Ark of Infinity, which again is not a very good story, but Barusa does appear and is helping the Doctor defend Gallifrey against another threat. But 
in helping the Doctor, he could actually be signing the Doctor's death warrant. There are some good scenes here with Barusa remonstrating with his own conscience. And Barusa's final appearance to date, again, another new actor, so four stories, four different actors. <laughs> Was this guy into extreme skiing or something? Is that why he's regenerating so much? The Five Doctors sees Barusa working with the Master in order to try and save the Doctor from the death zone on Gallifrey. And he also has to contend with a traitor in the High Council of Gallifrey itself. Now, as I say, these stories, the only common thread throughout them is Barusa and Gallifrey. So perhaps it's not the strongest arc of these four, but it is interesting to see four different actors' interpretation of Barusa as a character. And also, we see Barusa start off as a cardinal, work his way up to chancellor, and finally become president, mainly in the Doctor's absence, because the Doctor is elected president, and then Scarpers. Twice. <laughs> so there you have it. Five Doctor Who story arcs from the classic series that you can give a try today. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. I will have more videos in this series. So if you're out there watching and you know of another classic series story arc, let's say Peladon, let's say The Key to Time. I will be covering those, but maybe I've missed some in my list. So please do leave a comment if there is a story arc you know about that you would like to see covered for people out there who don't know about it. As always, thank you very much for watching.